Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for creatives. One of the first videos that I did this year was about scanning film using a digital camera. It was kind of like one of the only approaches that I hadn't explored yet. And I just used uh, the X-T4, a cheap seven artisans macro lens. And if you watch that video, you'll know that I was pretty impressed by the results considering I was using cheaper glass. Uh, and it really got me curious about the potential using something like a GFX. Uh, and there was this appeal to me of like investing in something like this and being able to use it as a camera and then also for scanning. So uh, recently I decided to pull the trigger on the 100S. It's been in a few of my uh, videos that have been on the channel so far. And just a couple days ago, I actually said goodbye to the CoolScan 9000. It was incredibly hard to part with, but needless to say, I've just been very impressed with this setup so far. So I uh, wanted to make this video today just to kind of share how my setups evolved, the accessories I've upgraded since that first video, obviously share uh, this setup, the lenses I'm using, and then we'll look at a number of the uh, the scans from it and compare them against the cool scan, just as a way to uh, give anyone out there a feel for how these image files stack up or these scans stack up uh, compared to the Nikon. I also wanna say, I know this is a very expensive setup. It's not gonna be for everyone, uh, but if there is one thing I learned from that first video, from the comments and the discussions, is just that there's plenty of options out there when it comes to APS-C or full frame or even medium format for scanning. It's really just gonna come down to what you need out of your scans. That's gonna be different for everyone. Uh, for me, uh, resolution, high resolution is important because I print large quite often. That's why I went for the cool scan in the first place. And that's why something like this appealed to me as well. So in my last video, I shared just like the breakdown of my complete setup. I'm still basically using everything, obviously other than the camera, uh, the Veloy accessories, the LED, same LED panel. Uh, but the one thing that I upgraded right away, I knew I wanted to, was the uh, copy stand that I was using, just using like a cheaper entry level one. And it was just like not super solid. And when you'd go and adjust focus, you get a ton of micro vibrations and it just didn't uh, inspire confidence. Uh, but what I didn't realize is how incredibly difficult it is to find uh, just like an affordable, solid copy stand. I just assumed that there'd be like the go-to one that everyone uses, but uh, they're either like incredibly expensive for high-end ones, or uh, a lot of people seem like they go and use old um, enlargers and they remove the head, which is fine. And it looks like it works well, but for me, I was really after just like something I could buy and use right away. So uh, what I ended up going with, I can't even remember how I found this, but this is, by a company called NovaFlex, they're a German brand. And this is called the MS Repro. And super simple, it basically just mounts to any surface. So I use it mounted to my desk. Obviously I don't, I usually keep it over there. But you can mount this to anything, it just clamps down. And then it has this uh, base plate here, which is really nice, it has a lock, but then there's just this really nice amount of friction. So even when the camera's mounted to it, it doesn't move and it just has this really nice feel to it where you can make these like micro adjustments and then lock it down. So, you know, overall the thing feels incredibly sturdy. I think it was like uh, 200 pounds. So obviously not the cheapest still, but in this uh, copy stand world, it actually seems quite affordable considering how solid it is. So I've been very happy with this. And then I just uh, actually put a small Manfrotto monopod head on the base plate. I bought this off of Amazon. I'll put a link to both of these below. But this just gives me a quick release and then obviously a little bit of extension to bring the camera out and then uh, gives me some uh, tilt as well with uh, the camera, which is great for leveling it. So uh, overall, this setup has been amazing. There is just one quirk that I'm trying to kind of work around and refine a little bit, which I'll talk about next uh, when we go into lenses. So obviously needed to get a macro lens for this setup. Uh, the option from Fuji for these cameras is their GF120. I think it's a 2,500 pounds brand new, which is, uh, for me, there is absolutely no way I would spend that. I can't spend that amount, uh, considering that I wouldn't use it for anything other than scanning. So uh, that led me in the direction of adapted lenses. And the first lens that I picked up and the one that I'm gonna be sticking with is Pentax's uh, 120 F4 macro. This is from their older 645 film cameras. 
and it's been really great so far. It was 150 pounds, which obviously is way cheaper than the Fuji, and the performance has been awesome. The only downside with this lens is, as you can see, uh, I have a Kipon adapter, and when it's focused out, say somewhere around there, the, it's really long. So obviously, you know, with it being a 120 mil lens, once you get something like this uh, Vloy adapter in there, um, I have to have it mounted as far as it can go up this coffee stand. And then even at that height, it just wasn't high enough to be able to get uh, the film in focus. So I had to go and adapt this base plate from one of my cinema cameras and do a little bit of a rig. So it works fine now, but I really wanted to avoid adding extra parts. And also obviously, you know, the higher something's mounted up this column, the more susceptible it's gonna to be to shake. So uh, that led me to search for a shorter focal length uh, to be able to get this, you know, mounted lower down the copy stand. And I ended up going with the Contax 60 mil 2.8 macro planar, which is a 35 millimeter still lens. This is a really like highly regarded, well-reviewed lens. I've eyeballed it for years, but the only problem is I couldn't find anything online about coverage other than uh, one comment in a thread where someone said covers well. So I took uh, a little bit of a gamble and picked one up. And unfortunately, as you'll see when we look at some of the images, uh, when you get close to one-to-one -to -one, uh, focusing, it starts to vignette just a little bit and there's some softness in the corners, which is a shame because uh, other than that, it would have been absolutely perfect. So uh, if you do shoot the GFX system and you're shooting with a shorter focal length macro that you've adapted, I would love to hear from you uh, what you're using and if it's nice and sharp corner to corner. But anyways, next we're gonna jump with the computer, uh, take a look at some of these images. But before we do that, uh, as always, just got to take a minute here to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Squarespace. I've been using them for a number of years now, and what I enjoy most as someone who really doesn't have any web design experience is just the wide range of professional and clean templates and just how simple and easy it is to use. So for example, if you're building out a photography gallery, you can just drop your photos in and then you can just click and drag them to rearrange, which is a really great way to not only update portfolios, but also just play around with sequencing and get new ideas. So check out squarespace.com today for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, you can use the code squarespace.com slash Kyle McDougall to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Okay, let's uh, hop on the computer and take a look at these scans. Okay, so jumping into the images here. We've got a few different ones to look at, some 645, some 67, and some 35. Uh, and most of them I have cool scan examples as well. And gonna do my best here to kind of show you side by sides. There's been some complaints in previous videos about not being able to tell a difference. It is difficult online, especially uh, using Lightroom. I can't zoom in any more than 100% for both of the images at once. So I'll either enlarge it in my editing software or I'll, I'll put a link to the images below. I'll put full res versions out if you wanna download them and check them out. But I'll try my best here to give you a good feel for them. But uh, first up, we have 645. So this is from the CoolScan 9000. And this is giving me like an 8,500 pixel long image. So pretty good size. And you'll see when we jump to the GFX, obviously this is full sense, so you don't have to crop. That's the beauty thing of it using uh, the 43 aspect ratio with 645 film. And this is giving me like almost an 11,000 pixel long image. So quite a bit bigger than the cool scan, very flexible file. And if we go, so this one is with the Pentax lens, but what we'll do is we'll go and do a side by side. So we have the Nikon on the left and the Pentax lensed GFX on the right. And we zoom into a hundred percent. So this is the Nikon here. Looks good, nice and detailed. And this is the GFX with the Pentax lens. And this was the first image that I, or one of the first images that I scanned and converted and instantly uh, put a smile on my face just because right away it told me that this setup, uh, even with this cheaper Pentax lens, uh, holds up and if not even looks a little bit better than the cool scan when it comes to detail. Kind of splitting hairs and it will be a little difficult obviously to see this online, but uh, really cool to see how well that setup works. So really neat overall. I'm not gonna pay too much attention to color. Like I've said many times in previous scanning videos with color negative film, there's so many variables 
that come into play. So it's not uh, really worth talking too much about. Uh, but yeah, the, I mean, the GFX files really don't look that much different at all. Uh, this was just converted using Negative Lab Pro, my kind of typical process here in Lightroom. But I will say uh, it's cool to see that the files are very flexible. So if we just say jack the shadows up to 100, and then we go to the Nikon and we do the same, we'll look at both side by side. So Nikon on the left, um, GFX on the right, you will see that there is some more like kind of this green color noise in the deep shadows. Obviously this is pretty extreme, but the GFX files are really clean, uh, which is awesome to see. So just a lot of flexibility for editing these, whatever you want to do with them. And then I'll throw the GFX with uh, Pentax lens on the left and I'll show you, I'm going to show you a couple uh, comparisons with the contacts. Cause like I said, unfortunately coverage was a little bit of an issue, which is a bit of a bummer because um, I was excited to be able to use this shorter focal length. So got Pentax lens on the left, contacts on the right. They look so incredibly similar, uh, almost identical in terms of uh, resolving detail. But where the contacts starts to fall off, unfortunately is in the edges in the corners. So if we go down to this corner here, this is the uh, Pentax. This lens stays sharp edge to edge, corner to corner, very impressive. And you'll see the contacts. A uh, lot, like it starts to kind of smear a lot less detail, especially in these plants as you get to the corners and the edges of the frame. And obviously this isn't surprising. The larger sensor is using uh, a lot of that image circle from that lens it's going out to the extreme edges. I just hoped that maybe, uh, I know some 35 mil lenses have a lot, like cover the sensor really well. I was hoping that would be the case for this one, but unfortunately not. And then I do, I just have this unconverted 645 negative, so you can see the vignetting there uh, from that contacts lens. So a little bit of a shame, but is what it is. This next one, so this is Nikon again, and this is 67 film, a 10,500 pixel wide image. So huge file. This was kind of as big as it got for me using the Nikon. If we jump to the GFX, you'll see 10,600, so almost identical. So not losing anything at all with these larger format sizes, uh, in some cases getting quite a bit higher resolution. But we'll do a comparison again. So we'll put uh, Nikon on the left, GFX with Pentax lens on the right. We'll go into 100. And you'll see again, they almost look identical. The Nikon maybe looks a little bit sharper on the sign, but the strange thing is we go down over here to this like grass, the Pentax actually looks a little sharper. So maybe there was, you know, focus differences between the two uh, or film flatness issues, which I doubt, but regardless, the Pentax looks just as good as the Nikon. They're almost identical files, to be honest. And then once more, we'll put the Pentax lens on the right. This is the contacts. They look very similar. Uh, when it comes to sharpness. Pentax maybe looks a little bit better on this one. But again, let's say we go to the edges here. You'll see that the contacts here on the right starts to get quite a bit softer and starts to kind of smear a bit. Okay, so up next is 35 millimeter and this is what really excited me. Um, this is the cool scan. 5,500 pixel wide, which is a nice size 35 millimeter scan. And this is one of my favorite things about the cool scan is having this multi-format uh, machine that can do medium format and also do 35 mil really nice. You can see uh, quite a bit of detail with the scanner. But if we jump to the GFX, we're getting like almost a 9,000 pixel wide image, which is crazy. So quite a bit bigger than the cool scan. And if we throw the cool scan on the left, and then if we zoom into this one, the one on the right is the Pentax lens. You can see, you know, the amount of detail uh, in the GFX image is just as good as the Nikon, even with it being quite a bit larger. So I was impressed with this Pentax lens for the price, how well it did resolving the detail in these negatives. Really cool to see, and it excites me a lot about using this setup, knowing if I need to, I can get these, you know, really large 35 mil scans, really high resolution. And then one more time, I'll just put the Pentax lens on the left, 
this is the context and I'll just, this is actually the first image where I noticed this drop off. So again, the Pentax, you can see even in the extreme corners, it holds up really nice. Whereas the Contax falls off quite a bit, unfortunately. And then there's just one more, um, this is a 645 image. I won't show you the comparison. This is the Pentax, you're getting the feel for it, I'm sure with the Contax one, but just one more to look at with the Pentax lens. Does a great job. Okay, so I have one more thing here I wanted to show. I actually went back and filmed this while I was editing this episode, so that's why I'm not on the screen right now. But this is an overexposed, about four stop overexposed negative uh, on the cool scan. I figured it could be cool to see how the GFX holds up as well. So this was Portra 800. And this is with the GFX. So it looks very clean. I'll put them up side by side. So we'll do Nikon on the left and GFX on the right. And this wasn't surprising when I did the original camera scanning video, the X-T4 handled this four stop over negative really well. Um, so I obviously knew that the GFX would as well, but uh, what was very interesting is, we'll throw this GFX four stop over on the left. I decided to go and take the most dense negative I had from this test I did. I think it was about six stops over with Portra 800. And you can see that here on the right, and obviously the color doesn't look great. Pushing this film quite a bit, you wouldn't normally do this. But it was really interesting to see how well the GFX handled this negative considering how dense it would have been. Like even the highlights here look pretty good. Obviously the shadows are gonna look great. So just, yeah, that impressed me. You know, it just shows me that uh, this system, one of these uh, medium format sensors, I'm assuming lots of other cameras as well, but uh, this one in particular, the GFX 100, just very flexible and able to handle uh, a variety of different negatives when it comes to exposure. So a couple closing thoughts to wrap this up. Obviously, you know, from the images that we saw, I'm very, very happy with the performance of this setup, especially with this Pentax 120 macro, considering how affordable it was compared to the Fuji version. You know, the performance was like bang on, or in some cases even better than the CoolScan. Obviously some of the formats, the resolution was quite a bit bigger. And yeah, overall it's just lived up to uh, the expectations that I had for it. But uh, the cool scan, for sure I'm gonna miss it. I think what that has going for it that this doesn't is just the simplicity and the easy use. You buy it, you load your film in a tray, and then you just scan and you go. Uh, with camera scanning, for sure there is more of like a setup process. It's a little more finicky. There's things to figure out, but honestly, I haven't found it that bad at all. I know in my last video, there were some people that commented who were just adamant that it was you know, so finicky and not worth it and they wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Obviously to each their own, but personally, I have not found it to be that difficult at all. It just takes some time. If anything, the most challenging part for me is just nailing uh, critical focus when you're using a ma manual focus lens, just with that little bit of variance. But um, other than that, it just takes some time to uh, find what you need and get a setup that works right for you. But um, yeah, moving forward, I'm excited to use this. Checks a lot of boxes for me. I hope that uh, this video helps give you a feel for what uh, this a camera like this is capable of for scanning film. And I think uh, one of the 50 megapixel versions is also an amazing option if you shoot a lot of medium format just with the native 4.3 sensor not having to crop anything. Uh, but obviously it all comes down to what you shoot. So. Uh, other than that, just want to say, yeah, hope you enjoyed this. Thank you as always for watching and uh, I'll talk to you soon.